Hi, my name is Lavinia and this is Peter taking a bath. Welcome to Games Made Easy, a channel to learn board games quickly and easily. Today, I'm going to show you how to play a real classic and that is Settlers of Catan. What's fun in Catan is that it's a great introduction to strategy games, so it's become a real classic, probably because every game is so different. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. In Catan, you play a settler landing in the new island of Catan. You compete against other settlers to get the most resources as possible. In this two to four play game, you're going to build settlements, you're going to build cities, roads and harbors to try to gather more resources than the others, uh, ultimately to try and build the most glorious territory. The winner is the person who reaches 10 victory points. That's it. To set up the game, start by building the island. You assemble the sea frame first, like this. Then shuffle all the terrain hexes. There are six types of terrain in Catan. There's four forests to produce lumber or wood, four pastures to produce wool, and four fields to produce wheat or grain. There's also three mountains to produce ore and three hills to produce brick. And there's one desert that produces nothing. Place them randomly within the sea zone and then place the 18 number tokens from A to R counterclockwise starting from the outside corner and skipping through the desert. After you're done placing all of them, you flip them. If you prefer to go completely random, you may just make sure that no two red numbers are next to each other. The red numbers, the six and the eight, are more valuable because they are more likely to roll. That's also why they have four dots. The dots represent the probabilities of the number rolling. Two and 12 are almost five times less likely to happen than six and eight. It is probably best to avoid placing the first settlement near one of these. You also have nine harbor tokens, which you place randomly on each harbor placeholder. Then you place a thief on the desert. You place all the resources in five stacks next to the board. Then you shuffle and you place the development cards as well next to the board. And you put the longest road and the largest army. And each player has five settlements, four cities and 15 roads in one color and the corresponding cost card for easy reference. Roll the dice to decide who starts and will place the first settlement. Each player will start the game with two roads and two settlements. The player who rolled the highest starts placing a settlement and a road next to it. Roads always have to start from a settlement or a city. Then in clockwise order, each player places a settlement and a road. You can never place two settlements next to each other. They have to be at least two roads apart. The last player to go places both his settlements and roads and takes the resource cards for the second settlement placed. So in this case, he would get grain, ore and wood. Then it goes in reverse order, counterclockwise. Each player places the second settlement and road. So the white will go here and the red will go here and they will also receive resources for the surrounding areas. The first player starts by rolling the two dice. The number indicates either the desert, which is a seven, or a resource. If it's a resource, all players producing it collect it, one resource for each settlement and two for each city surrounding the hexes. So for example, on this roll of six, the white would get a brick and the red would get a wood. If it's a seven, two things happen. If any player has eight or more cards, they have to discard half of them, rounded down. Also, the player places the thief on another player's number and steals one card from one of the players surrounding it. It should be another player because it blocks that number. So say for example, the blue rolled that seven and places it here. From now on, when the four is rolled, the white and red do not produce bricks. After rolling the dice, the active player 
can build settlements, can build roads, cities, can trade with other players or the bank, can also buy development cards or win a special card. To build, you need to pay the resources to the bank for each structure as indicated on the building cost card. For instance, you pay one wood and a brick to build a road. You give this to the bank and you place your road. You can only build one road per segment and they must always start from a settlement, a city or another road. You build settlements and cities in exactly the same way. Note that your new settlement has to be connected to an existing road. So say for example, the blue has played and he's managed to build a road and a settlement. Don't forget, it always has to be at least two roads from another building. Note that cities are upgrades of a settlement. To build them, you must first build a settlement or pay the price of a settlement and a city. If you did not collect enough resources to build, you can try to trade. Now, only the active player can trade. There are two ways of trading. You can try to trade with the other players. Here, any deal goes, it's really up to the players. Two, you can trade with the bank or the harbors. The bank gives you a four to one. Four cards of one resource to get one of another resource. That's a pretty bad deal. Better option is to trade with a harbor if you have a settlement or a city on it. Generic harbors like this one will let you trade three of one resource and you get one of another. Now specialist harbors like this one here have a two for a single resource. That's a great deal, especially if you're producing a lot of that resource. Note that you cannot trade development cards. You can only buy development cards. Pay the price of the development card, which is one grain, one wool, and one more, and pick the top card from the stack. There are three types of development cards, the green, the purple, and the orange. There are three different types of green cards. They give you special powers described on the card. You have the monopoly, the year of plenty, and road building. Once you play them, you discard the card. Then you have the purple cards. These are knights and count towards your largest army. To play them, simply line them up in front of you. Note that the knights can also be used to move the thief without the need to roll a seven. The knight can be used before or after the dice roll. All other development cards need to be used after the dice roll. Then finally, there are a few orange cards which are worth one victory point. Keep them hidden until the end of the game. For instance, if you have eight visible points and pick up a second orange card, share it at your turn and you've won Catan. Note that apart from orange cards, you can never use development cards you've just bought. You'll need to wait till your next turn. Also, you can only use one development card per turn, except for the victory point cards. Now, you also have two very special cards, the longest road and the largest army. The player who does the longest road receives the longest road card and gets two victory points. The road must be at least five in length. Note that the road can be interrupted by an opponent placing a settlement or a city on it. Similarly, once a player reaches three knights, they can claim the largest army and get two victory points. If an opponent makes a longer road or a larger army, then they would take the card and take the victory points. Remember you get one victory point per settlement, two per city. You can get two for each special card you have and one victory point per victory card you have. Once you're done with your turn, pass the dice to the player on your left. Now, my tips to win a Catan are try to maximize when placing that first settlement to get the production going. Wood and brick tend to be more important at the beginning of the game while ore and grain towards the end of the game. Harbors are also fundamental. A normal harbor can help a lot. A specialist harbor is great when you have a monopoly strategy. Both a balanced or a monopoly strategy can win the game. It's the neither nor that is dangerous. Now, don't un underestimate the power of development cards and keep that poker face when you get a victory card.
Be diplomatic with other players because trade is really important and try not to lead on too early in the game or nobody will want to trade with you. As soon as a player reaches 10 points, the game ends. In Catan, there can never be a tie because as soon as a player declares the 10 points, the game stops. That's how you play Settlers of Catan. It's a great introduction to strategy in area control games. You, the more you play it, the more you'll want to try out new strategies. It's a great game at two, three, and four players, probably more competitive at four. Every game will be around an hour, more or less. If you've enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, or leave in the comments a game you'd like us to teach. We'll make more games easy soon. Bye now.